have a lunch and learn on data collection, uh, looking at the GLP compliance system that they developed up at Piedmont uh, to facilitate data collection in the layer test and for the board of readers up there. So uh, to present, uh, I'm going to start with Teresa Herman. She's the superintendent of uh, the Piedmont Research Station, uh, formerly the manager of the poultry unit, and I'm going to let her introduce everybody else. Teresa? Well, first of all, let me say thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come down today and, and tell our story. Um, it's kind of a lengthy story. We've been in this process for over 20 months. We are certainly not experts, and we're going to be the first to say we have not figured everything out. But um, I'm really proud of where we have come from since we started. I've got a great group of folks that have been very dedicated, very passionate about what they do. Thank you to Dr. Curtis for providing us with lunch today. Here you are. Thank you very much. But most importantly, I want to thank Ken Anderson because he was very hesitant. Are you going to agree with this? You were very hesitant to start with, maybe a little skeptical that this was maybe not the direction that we wanted to go. But he believed in us. And he allowed us to think for ourselves and, and think outside of the traditional model of data collection. And because we have such a wonderful staff, and I'm going to raise my hand, raise your hand, the staff of the poultry unit. Because we have such a wonderful, innovative staff, we were able to work through all of these mountains of problems. And I will tell you, there have been mountains of problems that we have had to work through in developing this new digital data collection platform. But what a wonderful group of folks. You know, working in the poultry industry, we're typically a little rough around the edges, right? Because that's the nature of what we do. But this is a really sharp group. And even though we might be a little rough around the edges, these guys are brilliant. These guys are brilliant. I'm very proud of the work that they do on a daily basis. So Ken asked us to present on what we have done over the last 20 months with this digital data collection platform. And you'll find that this is kind of a comical <clears throat> title here, right? Okay, and we'll talk about this in a bit, but eggs on apples. So we started out using Android, an Android platform, and we'll talk about this, but it didn't work for us at the time. Um, but we have been able to harness a better collection platform, data collection platform, by using new technology. Hopefully I'll be able to use this new technology. Okay, we're all scientists in this room. We're all members of the university research station so we understand what research is all about we understand what data collection is all about so there are measurable parameters okay in the poultry industry some of the measurable parameters that we would want to record on a daily basis would be egg production body weight speed intake mortality we collect a lot of data so i'm going to paint you a picture of how much data we actually collect at the poultry unit. Okay, so you're going to have to do some math. There will be a quiz. <laughs> we have three free range houses at the Piedmont Research Station. Okay, within those three range houses, there would be four individual replicates or data points or places in which we could actually measure data. Okay, so we have three of those times four equals 12. 12. Good, good, eight. Okay, so right now we have 12 individual measurable data points. Okay, stay with me. They're going to follow my logic, hopefully. Then we move to our cage-free house. Can everybody see that in the back? It looks kind of dark. In our cage-free house, we would have 36 individual replicates, or 36 individual places in which we could measure data. Okay? Somebody's keeping up with these numbers, right? Then we move to our cage facilities. In our conventional cage house, we would have 144 individual points in which we could collect data. Okay? We move to our enriched and enrichable houses, we have 216. Does anybody keep up with these numbers? Okay, that equals about 12,000 eggs per day. So if you did that math, you came up with a lot of, a lot of different numbers, right? That would be individual, collectible, evaluatable data points. So in addition to Ken Anderson's block layer performance and management trial, we do lots of other studies. We have had a broiler breeder study in which we would have collected the same types of parameters, egg numbers, mortality, speed intakes, those kinds of things. In addition to that, Dr. Livingston's here. We, we actually ran a broiler study. 
and she can tell you that we collected individual body weights on every single bird for the duration of that trial. And these are numbers that we have to be able to look at, evaluate, and make decisions on. And we need to be able to do this in real time. So we keep lots and lots of data. So if you didn't do that math, I'm going to tell you what that math equals. Okay. So let's look at it in a little bit different perspective. We had the 12, re the 12 replicates at the range house. We had 36 in our free range, in our cage free house. We had 144 in our conventional house and 216 in the enriched and enrichable. Comes up to 408 individual replicates that we have to account for every single day. So let's look at it on a calendar. We just came back from a wonderful holiday. It was wonderful. Everybody had a nice vacation. Well, somebody still had to go count those 408 data points every day, or those 12,000 eggs, right? In addition to every single day that we have to collect those 408 individual data points, on Mondays and Wednesdays, we have to do feed. We have to feed those birds. Any plant science folks in the room? That would, that would be equivalent or analogous to microfertilizer application. Okay, we have to feed the birds. Um, so that would be an additional 408 data points collected on Monday and Friday. You following my logic here? Okay. Every 28 days, we have to take that feedback out of all 408 data points. So every 28 days, we have to collect, make sure I get my math right, 1,224 data points that day. Okay, you can see how this is starting to add up, right? A lot of data, a tremendous amount of data. Every 28 days, we collect 16,000 data points. Okay, that would be your eggs, your feed, your way back. But that's not all, okay? In addition to the eggs and the feed and the way back, we also have to weigh those birds. Okay, so that's another almost 9,000 data points that we have to maintain. In addition to that, Ken makes us go do candle and gray every period, right, Ken? So you would have to weigh the eggs, you would have to candle the eggs, you would have to grade those eggs. So that's an additional set of data points that we have to be able to maintain. So if you look at over a 90 week period or 109, depending on what the, the block is on, yeah, uh, the duration of the block, you're looking at half a million data points that have to be maintained. It's a pretty big number, right? We have to be able to evaluate those data points. That doesn't include a lot of other things that we have to maintain on a daily basis. We also have to take, check the temperature, we have to check the static pressure, we have to check the water availability. So there's a tremendous amount of data that we have to maintain on a daily basis. Anybody recognize this? <laughs> Having spilled coffee down my shirt three times already today, I don't know how that picture got staged, okay? Um, but this is a very common way of, of collecting the data. This is the way data has always been collected. This is the traditional platform for data collection in most places. Okay? You can see the problem, problems with this, right? We went back and we did the math on how many pieces of paper would have been used on a daily basis at the Piedmont Research Station poultry unit. We're looking at 300 pieces of paper a month that someone had to evaluate and analyze. We have one person dedicated to taking this and entering it into a spreadsheet, okay? I have terrible handwriting. I spill coffee. I'm subjected to rain and snow and chicken manure and who knows what all. So by the time that data sheet makes it back to the person that's going to enter the data, can you see where there can be problems, okay? Sometimes we have to enter that data twice. If we have mortality numbers, it goes onto this sheet, then it has to be transferred to another sheet so that we can maintain the inventory of those birds that we currently have in stock, okay? So you've got certain data that gets entered multiple times. And the biggest thing that I think I want to, to bring home is that it may be a month or six weeks before Dr. Anderson has the opportunity to see this data and make any type of management decisions based on what the bird production has been. Okay, so now 
let's tell you a little bit about what we're doing now. And before I pass the baton to Kelly, I'll tell you just a little bit about the platform that we're using now. We are not married to this platform. This is a, a, a work in progress and we're continually to, trying to evolve and make this better. But currently we're using a Google platform. Everybody in this room has a Unity ID. So if you have a Unity ID with NC State, you also know a little bit about what Google offers in terms of their sheets and Google Slides and the spreadsheets and those sorts of things. It's a free, it's a free file storage system. Okay, everybody in this room has access to that. The cool thing about Google Drive is it allows us to synchronize data across multiple different users. Okay, the other cool thing about that, that Google Drive is that it works across multiple different platforms. So although we're currently using the Apple products, it also works on Android and Windows and lots of other major platforms. So just because we're currently using Apple's, we're not married to that and we're looking to improve every single day. And also, the researchers, if Ken comes up with a data sheet that he thinks is important, we can create the sheet in Google Drive and it's been um, very advantageous. So with that, I'm going to pass the baton to Kelly, who is the, the current poultry unit manager, and let her explain the specifics and the nuts and bolts, because this has become a very complicated process. What started out being very, very simple has now become kind of a monster in terms of um, our data sheets and, and the way that they're collecting this. Thank you. Teresa did the hard part. She did all the left brain work with all the calculations. Um, I'm more right brain. I like pictures. So we're going to have more pictures in my part. Thank goodness. Um, if you look at this, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. These are the old data sheets or some of you might actually be your current data sheets. The problems we were into was you've got these initials, hopefully if you've written down things that you've added, you actually remember two initials um, and you remember to add the date. You have, you have to write in D, E, 9 kgs, 8 kgs, you know, whatever you put into it, but there is no really good system. Again, as Teresa mentioned, handwriting is the issue. Um, for me personally, and there are some people with very nice handwriting, I'm not one of them. If we go to Google Docs, as she was saying, some of the advantages are this is entered automatically in terms of your timestamp with the initials of the technician who's doing the data collection as well as the time and the date. There is also a space where they can enter it manually just to kind of help have it there. Um, it's easier to check. So that's kind of solved that problem. We do have with editing the data, I don't know if you can see it here, if you wanted to switch it, you know, two and a half was supposed to be where 1.4 was. Again, here you just delete, you re-enter the data. I'll show you later on better slides of it, but there is an audit trail where it shows exactly who changed the data, who deleted it, what was there previously, what the new value is, what time, what date, and exactly the person who did it. So you can trace all of that back if there's any questions versus a month later after you're actually punching in these data sheets and the thing's been erased or Teresa spilled coffee on it and now you're trying to read it and you're like, is that a T or a J or who did that? And then you ask the person, they don't remember, it's been a month. Um, the notorious, I think, handwriting, where it, is this a four, is this a nine, I'm not sure. If you're lucky, Lisa's been in the position long enough where she got to where she recognized many people's handwriting. If she retires, somebody else has to learn all over again. Um, it's actually pretty easy to read, you know, MR, and they just can type using the handwriting. We also have color codes for our diet, which makes it very easy. So you can see blue feed is G feed. It's added on this tab. When you enter it, you see it lines up here. <coughs> and it turns the cells blue thanks to conditional format. So it's very, very easy to follow. You know if you put the feed in the right thing, all you have to do is check next to it. There's magnets on the feed hoppers for each replicate, so you can actually see we work in teams. So I will say, you know, this is five, four, six, seven, it's blue. They will confirm on the magnet that it's blue. It's a double check system, and it's easy to see on this. You add the feed by each individual feed, so F is yellow, E is red. Um, there are ribbons tied to the feed augers. It's very easy to follow, unless you're colorblind, but yeah, we don't have too many of those. Um, if you miss a data entry, that is a problem. I mean, this system isn't going to erase that risk, but it does make it easier to see because, like I said, you've got a column of blue here. If you see one sticking out or a gray box next to this blue box, it does give you a little bit more indication that something is missing. The other advantage is I don't have to go through 30 pages to find out there's a block missing. I can actually see today, oh wait, somebody missed something. We can go back and enter it. The biggest, I think, role for us has been mortality sheets. This was an old mortality sheet for us. There's things highlighted, there's stars, but unfortunately, I'm sure that made sense to me when I put that star and that you know, important note there, but it's been maybe a month or three months before I look back at it. I have no idea what I was thinking. 
again, handwriting issues, scribble things out. With this, we have what's actually Google Forms. Each one of these fields is required. You have to enter your replicate number into your band number. It also accepts uh, letters if you want to put in no band, if that's one of the cases you have. It gives you call to death. You also have a chance to write in comments if there's something that's not covered in this section. It does actually timestamp um, and date it when you do enter it, but we do have a date entry here just to make our records a little bit easier. And then again, the recorder's initials. So immediately if it's an accident and they don't add any more comments and there's KB written next to it, Lisa can come back to me immediately and say, hey, what's this? What happened with the accident? Was it a mechanical injury or did you just shut the door or what happened? And we can actually follow that away and understand what's happening immediately. The best part about this system, I think, and I think Lisa will agree is she had to enter all this data, those entries from that form go into this database. This works like an Excel spreadsheet. I can sort this by the date, by the cause of death, by the replicate, anything I want as long as it's still in those columns. Which where, where this really comes greatly into play is my inventory sheet. So instead of going through, I think house five, we have 216 replicates. Instead of having to go through 216 replicates and 216 pages and figure out where did this bird die, how many do we have now, I just scroll through here, sort it by the cage, sort it by the rep, type it into that, we're done. It takes, what, an hour? It's not a difficult program. So it's pretty easy to see why we made the switch. At the time, what happened was Teresa had just come on as manager. Um, it was a new manager, new ideas, new energy, new opportunities. Technology had kind of advanced to the point where it was actually achievable. We had um, a lot of wireless technology that we had had in the past. Apples, Androids, and things like that were becoming more popular and more cost effective. Uh, again, the almost 300 pages that we needed to have to go through, and then the hours and hours and hours of typing down and double checking down and making changes. It was just a drain on resources, and I think it probably lowered a lot of people's stress levels to make the change. Um, again, the risk of errors, because you've got several different times you're handling this data, you're handling this paper, it's people reading things, typing it in, going back and forth. No audit trail if I forget to sign my name or if I forget to write something down. It's just difficult to track the raw data. Um, on paper versus electronically. Again, the turnaround time was a problem, I think, more for Dr. Anderson and probably for Lisa because she had to punch it in. It was hard to make decisions because you don't know you've got a problem until perhaps maybe three weeks to a month have passed, and by then your little problem has become a massive problem. And now you're kind of on the back foot. It's probably spread by that point. You have to go figure out what went wrong and when, when nobody remembers because the issue occurred a month ago. Again, 12 binders of data per flock, I think that's what we estimated you used for your previous flock before we made the switch. And these aren't, you know, the little cute binders. Those are those big three-inch binders, and they take up quite a lot of space. And now you have to store those. Uh, it's difficult to go through, too, if you think, oh, I want to look at the mortality for pin four, five, six. Where do I go? I have to go dig into these files now. Anyway, <coughs> if Dr. Anderson is in Atlanta, if he's in his office in Raleigh, he doesn't have to drive down to see us. He can just check on his phone, check on his iPad, check on his computer. Search function immediately tells you the data you need to know where it's at. Um, storage space, as I said, for GLP, we'll talk about that in a minute. Good laboratory practices, they will recommend that you store that up to five years. If you've got 12 binders of data per flock for one flock, now you multiply that by your career, how many different flocks you run. Um, I'm sure Ryan can say how many different trials do you have going on at the, front, at the farm right now that you have to keep up with. And then where do you store them? How do you keep them safe from fire, from mildew, from pests, uh, mice, moths, things like that? It's just a huge pain. So the advantages are pretty easy to see. It's globally accessible. Uh, it's easier to collaborate. In fact, this presentation, we were kind of joking about it. It was made with you know three or four of us across the different offices. Teresa's not in our office. She's across the road. Um, in different cities, Dr. Anderson was sitting in Raleigh while we were in Salisbury checking in. At one point, um, I was in Africa, and I could actually log on and check it in and provide feedback with it. And we didn't have to be in the same office huddled around like one computer. I hate to say it, like the 1990s, like that was so long ago. <laughs> 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 like the Stone Ages. Um, we could actually just do this on the go wherever we were, and everybody's changes synced. And I mean, this morning we were making changes that synced across everybody's. Uh, laptop, so it's perfect. It's open, transparent data collection. You can sit in your office and watch as we collect data. You can immediately know pin 5 looks a little funny. Can you go reweigh it? Uh, why is that mortality happening? And we can immediately respond and go take care of it. One of the other benefits we found is communication. Each iPad has like FaceTime, so we can actually message each other. We can actually call. It's easy if I'm dressed out in my kit and I'm in house 5 and say, oh, there's a leak. 
or something's not right, I can take a picture, I can send it to Anthony, Anthony can say, you need this equipment, let me bring it to you. So I don't have to waste time dressing out, go digging through the store and trying to find what I want, dress back, come back in. It makes life a lot easier for everybody to have that open communication. More rapid turnaround, I'm pretty sure Dr. Anderson will appreciate this. Decision making has become a lot faster. Instead of, particularly we've seen our feed changes, instead of having to wait and see after we've typed in all this data, after we've collected it, and going through everything and seeing, oh, we need to change the feed. Now we actually can see it what, within a week after we've made, um, after we've done our way back, we can see where the production is and how we need to change the feed. And that's helped us save a lot of uh, feed because the hen's production is dropping. Now it's been a month since you've weighed that feed. It's probably dropped further, you don't know. You're still on the previous feed. So it helps you move a little bit faster and it, I think it better reflects the hen's needs in a more rapid way. It helps you feed that hen what you need to for the project. Paperless, I know that's kind of the buzz phrase. We're trying to save the environment, oh, go green and stuff like that. It is decreased, decreased storage space for us, reduced risk of loss, um, and like I said, GOP compliant. Specifically, when we talk about good laboratory practices, I think the highlights that Google Docs offers is the changing of the editing privileges. So if I want to archive something, I can change my editing privileges to make it read only, um, and then I've stored it. It's stored electronically, so it's safe. I don't have these massive binders sitting somewhere in a closet. I can change the GOP, what their requirements are for data storage, is that it be accessible, readable, and potentially reprocessable. So you can go back and access that data if you need to. And you can limit rights on who has access to it as well. Even if paper data is scanned, it actually is not really truly electronic data still. You still have to retain that raw data, uh, that raw data according to GOP requirements. Online archiving is obviously preferred uh, for electronic data, so it doesn't really make sense to have these advantages and then burn a bunch of CDs and store those CDs somewhere. There's so many clouds, um, there's so many digital storage options now available and for fairly decent prices or for free. I mean, Google Docs is for free, we'll use the heck out of it. As long as you have it properly labeled, it's archived, it has a full index that you can go back and find things and it's secure, which Google Docs has been for us extremely secure. Um, I get more spam on my NCAGR email than actually on my Gmail. It's, it's worked well for us so far. In terms of the electronic signature, as you would, you know, in your paper, you always have to sign things and date them. That happens automatically with Google Docs. Each technician has an individual account. When they sign in, everything is changed directly under their name. So if I make a change, it's clear that Kelly is moving in this field. She's changing it. Um, I can't say Anthony made the change. And we don't allow the sharing of laptops so, or of iPads. Everybody has their own iPad. They stick with it. The date, time, technician ID is recorded automatically. So if you have a question, it leaves an audit trail. Any changes that are made, any data or entry, it's there. You can go back and check it. And then again, like I said, the time set to record for each entry made, each edit, what was removed, and what was added. So if you see here, I think this was around Christmas time. Anthony was lucky enough to be working. Um, the pink block is him. I can watch as he's entering these eggs. It gives me a timestamp, and it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty simultaneous. <coughs> 54 of them, 54 of was at the time working with a guy named Franco. He was in a different row, but you can actually go see the pink is Anthony, the gray is Franco. I can see as they enter the floor eggs, as they enter the nest eggs, they'll ping pong back and forth. If he went back and made a change, it would have time stamped and dated that, and I can just go back and say, okay, actually, he decided maybe he dropped an egg or something and he changed his numbers. But I can see all of that. It's stored on the computer. Um, I can see the current version. I say, if I decide something went horribly wrong and I need to restore this version, I can do that. Versus this. I mean, this is not even 12 binders, but it's just, we're on our 40th flock right now. If I have to think about how much paper data we have to store and have to keep up with, then it, just, it's a nightmare. And again, how do I keep this safe from mice, from fire, from anything? Challenges, obviously nothing is going to be foolproof. It is expensive. Um, initially, you do have a high investment cost. We've had the system for about a year now, and so far we haven't had to replace too much equipment, no serious breakdowns or anything. Uh, we initially had issues with the Android tablet. That's what led us on with the iPads. I think the Android technology has improved a bit now. Um, for us, the iPads work well because most everyone has an iPhone. In terms of airdropping and taking pictures and stuff like that, it does make it a lot simpler. Um, but any tablet now, they've become so cheap and so affordable that it's not a difficult thing to use. Connectivity issues have occurred from time to time. But these tablets do have data records that can be transferred. You have um, what is it, spreadsheets on Google, you have it on your iPad, you have it on your Android. We can actually type it in and then transfer it later. It's not ideal, but if you do have Wi-Fi issues, but I think we've only had 
less than 10. I mean, knock on wood, but we haven't had several issues with connectivity. Always the people can be a bit of a challenge. Changes were difficult. Um, resist we got resistance from Dr. Anderson himself, but now he's actually organizing this whole thing to promote the system, so I guess he got over it. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. Administration. Um, but again, a lot of people have iPhones now. They have Android phones. They have Samsung phones. Uh, we have employees ranging from their early 20s to their 60s. They all have smartphones, and they all know how to use this now. There is a bit of a steep learning curve, I'm not going to lie, but we've got people over that learning curve. It takes time, but again, it takes time with the paper system. At least with this system, if they make a mistake, I can see it, I can go back, I can correct it, and I can fix the problem in the future. And when I talk about a steep current learning curve, I mean, this is kind of overwhelming. Uh, we've got 260 reps in one house, 19 different strains of birds, five different diets across the bottom, and there's different amounts of feed that may be added on different days and different people are going through it. It's a lot of data. Like Teresa said, it was just a ton of data points. But this actually makes it better to manage, because if you think about it, that stack of papers that's this thick, and you have to go through and type it in without making an error and catching everyone else's error, is just as intimidating. So different types on different tab colors, with different color system. I think for me, I'm a visual person. To have those colors kind of pop out makes it easier to see, makes it easier to track versus just looking at a sheet of paper. Um, again, if you can track the people, if you can find the mistakes, if you can monitor the mistakes, you can correct them. The mistakes you don't catch are the ones that just continue on and on and on. Estimated cost, I think this is a slide everyone's probably been waiting for secretly now that we've sold the program. The internet charge per month, it would be about $73. I think that would probably depend on where you are, what your location is, uh, what kind of deal you have set up with your provider. Equipment for the Wi-Fi transmission, $600 roughly. The outdoor signal option, $140. Um, cables, connectors, miscellaneous like that, about $130. Bucks. iPads in case, $430. It's not you know out of the ballpark expensive, but it is a huge cost. Um, total for us, for our setup, was about $5,700. If you really want specifics, you would need to speak to Anthony right there about the, the names of these things. I am a chicken person. He is the technology person. He it that way. Um, but it's not, I mean, 5000 bucks. it's expensive. But again, this has lasted us at least a year. If you look at the hours that you would have put into that, the man hours going into it, I think that's going to show a lot more than 5000 bucks. Ultimately, for us anyway, the advantage is that way the cost. Um, I would hope they would for you guys as well. I think our biggest take-home messages that we found with using the system, the advantages to it, would be the increased likelihood of catching errors and improving the audit trail. Again, that's part of the GLP compliancy that you would want to seek as a researcher. It's a better use of resources, um, and I think that gives us more accurate data capture. I've got a, th a thousand other things I need Lisa to do besides sitting and typing in this telephone book full of data. Um, she could be collecting eggs, she could be fixing data, she could be analyzing data. She could be doing something much more than sitting there like punch, 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 punch. Uh, the live data, the rapid turnaround, I think that's increased a lot of communication between Drs. Anderson and the farm. Um, it's really easy now to say as we get the data, actually the afternoon after way back, we can call him and say, listen, this rep doesn't look right. Something's off here. And he can look at it himself on his computer. We don't even have to email him. He can just log in, check, and say, oh, that is wrong. You do this, do that, or double check this. And it's much, much quicker. The initial cost is high, but again, it's a long-term investment. Um, I think if you weigh it against the man hours and the time and the risk that you're taking, it actually will balance out in the long run. And for us, this is just the beginning. Like I said, we've only had this for about a year. We haven't even scratched the surface with how to do this yet. Um, Anthony's learning a lot of different things that we're trying to incorporate and how we can make this better, make it a more efficient system and increase our communication. Um, we're going to do a live demonstration now. We do have questions, I think, at the end. This is my analog technician, Lisa. This is my digital technician, <laughs> Anthony. So you've got the old system and the new system to compare. I think we're going to do a live demonstration now. I think, Mr. Digital, can you hook it Take up? Take it away. I think what we're going to do is FaceTime one of the technicians in the house.
I'll go in and since I'm the one that kind of initiated this up at three months, well not initiated, they initiated it because they wanted to save time and labor. And I was in favor of it in that I we made a significant change in the way that we had to collect data. And that is everything is by strain. So all 19 strains are dealt with independently of one another. So if, if one strain has a particular feed intake, they have to adjust everything in accordance with that. So we made that significant change. And I, and I have to say that they initiated it 20 months ago, so it, it came into play with the rearing, with the rearing phase. And because of this technology and that it freed up time and labor, this system has already paid for itself. Uh, they saved me about $13,000 in fees and labor costs uh, in the rearing period alone uh, by utilizing this system. Uh, and we got more accurate data, and the breeders were uh, ecstatic <laughs> about it. Uh, the other, the, I guess the one thing I don't like about it is uh, when I was at Poultry Science, we were having issues with feed intake. Uh, I got a call in the middle of a, a Poultry Science meeting down in, you know, down in Orlando. Uh, hey, what do we need to do with this? So we sat and talked for about an hour, uh, working through everything, but it's important. Uh, because of the way that we have changed the data. We have got to respond to this. And, and dealing with it six weeks after, like we did in the past, uh, I'm not a really good prognosticator in those instances. Uh, and it made it really difficult to uh, keep uh, the productivity and the feed intake of the bird uh, correlated. So uh, in that respect, this system has really uh, made the big advantage there and made the breeders much happier. Now, they're not happy with some of the data that we collect, but that's in regard. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, is this is actually leading to a revision of a publication that we did uh, a few years ago. So we're actually going to get an indication of time that it takes to look after the different production systems that they use up there. So, and Kelly's actually co-authoring now. So I'll let you know that you're on, you're on link. The other advantage that we have found with the system is our availability of talking through things real time, virtually, whatever you want to call it. We can actually give tours of the Piedmont Research Station now via FaceTime on a, a large screen TV. We've never been able to bring large scale tours onto the research station because of the biosecurity concerns. And so as people drive by, they have no idea what we do on a daily basis. So now, you know, if I want to take a tour, a, a school group, through the poultry house or through the conventional cage system, all I have to do is FaceTime one of the technicians on the inside of the house, and we can talk about things. Obviously, the, the, the pixelation is not great. It's kind of hard to see, and I think as time goes on, the technology is going to improve so that we have the availability to, you know, see this as if we were standing in the house. And this is the opportunity that it has afforded us. We've been able to take people in these houses that have never been in the houses before. Have you ever been in the house before? Mm -hmm. Now you see what it looks like on the inside. And so we can start dispelling some of those myths about what goes on in the, you know, the secret poultry houses. It's really, it's, it's a very simple technology. Everybody has this on their iPhone. We're just taking advantage of the simplicity of it and, and using it to our advantage. So I think, you know, any questions so far? Because, you know, we can sit here and literally ask a person inside the house, hey, what is, what is it, what are you looking at there? Stop it, whatever, you know, what's going on? And, and we can do that. I can, if Kelly were in South Africa, she would say, whoa, 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 stop. What's going on right there? You know, and, and this is an opportunity that we never had before. Um, also, I want to show, and this is the next part of the live demonstration, I want to show how we can monitor folks inside the house. And there's been an unforeseen consequence of this timestamp. This is not something that we intended to happen, but we've been able to monitor employee behavior. <laughs> because if you have an employee that, you know, he enters two or three cells and then he goes out back and does whatever he does for the next 30 minutes, 
I can see that. And this has been very much an unforeseen consequence of it. And, you know, and I think people realize now, they're like, hey, Kelly is watching me. And the beauty of it is, when, when we log into here, you can see who is watching you. So, you know, it's kind of hard to watch people in these poultry houses. But when they're supposed to be entering data, I can see what they're doing. So, let's, you want to go to the other part of the demonstration? I have to get Anthony to take care of this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, obviously, I didn't, I wasn't at the poultry unit in the old school, in the old way of collecting data. But some of the, some of the older gentlemen and folks that have worked there for many years, even though they were very hesitant to go this route, they wouldn't go back to the old way of data collection. <laughs> we have 40 boxes of dead raw data in, in library archives now from Blair Little boxes? No. Archive boxes. Archive boxes. Those are by that. Yeah. Yes. Especially when it's going to be shown out there. Yeah. And we're starting now to spread this out to the other divisions as well. So the dairy side, the crop side. Um, for us, I don't know, and this might be more interest to Ryan, we've also been able to track our hours when we work in houses. So when Dr. Anderson says he wants to do a study, I know how long is it going to take in each house, how many people am I going to need, because I've got all that information electronically now. And it's much easier to work with it in a spreadsheet than going, I think it took like an hour, maybe three. Well, the other thing mm -hmm. is that knowing utilizations we used to do. Mm -hmm. The other thing is FDA and safety plans. Yeah. Access, time, stamps, logs. Mm -hmm. Your visitor log is now online. Yeah. That's just, we just did that. We had an old Samsung tablet and we have a Google form on now, so when you come in we hand you a tablet you have to digitally sign in. Um, we kind of did it just to show off at first, but then it actually became really handy because we could go back and say, oh, but the gas guy, he's been here last month and the month before, but ah, he's short this month, where's he at? He hasn't been here yet. Um, this is, I think this is Derek, yeah. Like I said, we can see him typing in data. We can see if he decided to punch in one number and then it took him 40 minutes to punch in his second number. <laughs> maybe there was an issue. Maybe over oh, drinker broke and he had to go fix something. But I can message and say, "Are you Hello. okay? Is everything fine? <laughs> Are you awake?" <laughs> so you yeah, can actually send messages here and there and say, "Does everything look fine? Are you having any issues? Do you need anything?" Um, it's really convenient. Like I said, most times you always get dressed out in the house and you've forgotten something, it, just without fail. So it's really nice to be able to message someone and say, oh, could you please bring me this, could you please bring me that. Um, and we've also found, too, when we have to take egg samples for Dr. Anderson, instead of trying to remember, oh, it's cage 5, 8, 24, we can highlight these cells. And so immediately everybody knows, whoever goes into that house, they see that highlight with a certain color that we use and say, okay, I have to take samples today. We don't have to remember it, we don't have to write it down. I don't know if it's making us smarter or dumber, but it is helping us remember things. And we can delete this later because it's not actual. But that, Eric, Derek is not that fast. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's a really good employee, she but he's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, questions for us. Um, like I said, this is a work in progress. We are by no means experts. Um, we've had a great team working on this progress. Um, we, we make changes every day. We learn something new every day. I hope that we can continue to do that. Hopefully we can help you, you know, figure out a way to make this part of your daily data collection routine. And maybe there's something that you can provide to us to make us more efficient. Because we are certainly open and willing to suggestion. We want to do a better job. I think we have just scratched the, the top of where we can go. We're kind of at the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that we can do. Um, and we can do it as a team. We can't do it on our own, but we can do it as a team. Yes. The only I will say for me is an excellent program. I would like to encourage my boss here that we try to go in five thousand dollars I think for that kind of equipment will be paid fast like he said. And the question will be we are for the staff. How long you think take the training? Because uh, for because you say already you are no expert but already you have the screen. But for being involved, like need to be in this kind of system. 
It's not, it's not difficult. If you're very accustomed to an iPhone or an Android phone, it's not difficult. You, each of these iPads, and, and we can show on a, each of the iPads, for those that are less experienced, we put the tabs that they would need to work out of on the home screen. Mm -hmm. So if they need to work in a particular tab, it's just right here. So they don't have to go through and look through a thousand different tabs like they had to on mine because I've got everybody's information on mine. They would have their own specific data sheets. So not all of the information that you would have seen on that, that iPad is access, accessible to every technician. So they would be able to go in and log into their specific data sheets, and that's it. And it's just right here on the home screen. I'm probably the oldest person <coughs> on the farm that this past year and in this room, and they trained me to do it in a few minutes, and I collected egg data. So. Yeah, I so there you have it. Don't be afraid of it. You're a young girl. It's really, it's very, very simple. Yes. Um, is there, I mean, I'm familiar with the iPhone, but not necessarily all the technology. Is there a way to like, decontaminate the iPhone, the pads in, say, you know, from treatment to treatment? Or if there's biosecurity concerns in one room? Alcohol. I mean, a lot of the um, equipment you can wipe down with alcohol swabs, and that's generally good enough for us. Um, they're in cases as well. Well, that's just more for for the dogs equipment. We're going to drop it. Um, but if you wipe it down with alcohol, that gets most of the dust out of it. That's one of the things that we did invest in. We invested in the heavy duty cases because we are in poultry houses. Very harsh environments: dust, manure, water, you know, humidity. We, we made the investment and got the life proof cases and the heavy duty auto box cases to protect this investment. Mm -hmm. knock, on, knock on wood. Yeah. We haven't had to replace one yet. You know, I know eventually that will happen, but so far it's not been that bad. Um, Are you going to transfer this technology over to other units and Caleb to his farm and other research stuff? <coughs> that's the push. That's the, that's the idea. And you can speak to that as well, Caleb. We're using it for more than just poultry data now. I think some of the information I sent to Lori was on Google Forms that everybody has started using. Um, there's so many applications to this, so many applications, not just poultry. Um, we're going to have pesticide inventories available to folks. When the pesticide inspector comes, if I'm the only person around, I can grab my iPad and say, hey, come on, let's go. I can show you exactly what's in the inventory. Or how many hours did we work on Gina Fernandez's trial? Oh, hold on, I can show you immediately that it's on here. Um, there's just a tremendous opportunity to, you know. I hate to be addicted to this thing, but we are somewhat addicted to our iPads now. I mean, everything that I need to know at Piedmont Research Station, I can find in my iPad pretty quickly. Well, I mean, in purchasing, too, that's actually a good point. But beyond just data, um, for purchasing, we've actually got a purchasing inventory now of what we bought, how much it cost, when. Um, it's nice. For us, it was nice because we um, recently hired a pest control company, an outside company, to come and do our pest control. And we actually had the data to say, okay, in the past month, we spent, you know, $2,000 on rat bait, on snap traps, on et cetera, whatever, on the pest control, versus what the company's going to cost us per month to come in and do it. Instead of having to dig through your old POs and your emails, when did I order this, when did I order that, it's all on the spreadsheet. You just sort it by what you want, find it, cut and paste, send it to Lori, and it was very, very easy to do. So, And, and for them, for uh, we're, we're trying to get a handle on what it costs to actually operate and, and conduct a research project. I mean, for me, being able to go to them and say, okay, I want to do X, Y, Z, uh, what do you need for cost recovery? I mean, they can... They can tell me within an hour, uh, you know, what I need to put into my budget uh, to cover to cover the cost that needs to be covered. And that evolved from the study that Candy Orr did in, in terms of um, evaluating number of man hours assigned to a particular project. All of our folks now have an iPad at the poultry unit, so when they finish with a particular task or a particular project leader, they enter their time. So at the end of the week, I know exactly how much time to charge Ken Anderson for his trial. So the next time he wants to do that trial, I'm going to say, well, it cost me this many hours. You know, it has become a, a, a really powerful business tool in addition to being able to analyze data. I can, I can use this to make business decisions as well. 
I think for the maintenance group too, we started a maintenance log, and that's where Teresa said we have really begun to figure out the potential here. Um, we've started a maintenance log. Every time there's any kind of breakdown in the house, you report it, you write it in. Our maintenance guys check on their computer, so I don't have to go find the guys and say, oh, house three, I can't remember what rough that was, it's broken. They just check it, they go and they take care of it. And it helps us too because if the same thing keeps breaking over and over and over, you're not going to remember it. But if you see the same thing popping up on the screen, you can search it and say, maybe it's telling you to replace this entire piece of equipment versus, you know, pouring money into it it's obviously lying. So there's a lot of different things that I think you can utilize it like that to eventually save you money. Yeah. He'll <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. Those are my data. <laughs> 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 it's a little nervous. Yeah. It's okay. You can go back and see the, the revision. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll check. <laughs> Any more questions? I, 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 I just uh, like to comment. I, I'm Richard Wright, uh, one of the assistant commissioners, and I, I just want to commend uh, this team uh, for their efforts. Uh, Dr. Anderson for his uh, support and continuing uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, this, I think, is really significant uh, in terms of helping us collect better data, have better documentation, have uh, better uh, data for decision making, and I, I'm excited that uh, this is something that will have implications beyond uh, the poultry uh, unit itself. Uh, but I'm proud of our people. I'm proud of their creativity and innovation and thinking about how to improve and make their job uh, easier maybe, but actually uh, leveraging technology for uh, collecting better data and having better research. And it's just an exciting thing. And I just want to th thanks, thank the Poultry Science Department for uh, giving everybody this opportunity to share and to be here together and benefit from it. Um, Teresa, Kelly, uh, Anthony, Lisa, Lisa, Anthony, yep. yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you make us all proud because we're, we're doing better work for NC State, we're doing better work for NC Poultry. By the way, if you don't know, you need to know, this is the latest 2017 North Carolina Ag Highlights. Do you know what's at the top of the page now that has not been there before? Poultry. All poultry. North Carolina leads the nation in all poultry. Uh, all poultry, which includes broilers and eggs and turkeys, uh, is, uh, as of the latest rankings, uh, we are past Georgia, we are past Arkansas, and contributed 4.54 billion, with a B, dollars. You are all a part of the largest, um, the largest commodity uh, impact on our agriculture and on our $84 billion uh, agricultural economy. Spread the good word. <laughs> and there's your personal copy. <laughs> there's one for Dr. Anderson. <laughs> That's a part of my job. I know, I'll, I'll leave this at the end of the month. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to add one more comment, and then I promise I'll be quiet. Last year, and I, yeah, it was all of last year, Dr. Anderson allowed me to do something that's not typically done in poultry science right now. Finishing my master's degree in poultry science, distance education, Dr. Anderson recorded his lectures so that I could remotely finish my master's degree at Piedmont Research Station in his class, even though I wasn't in Raleigh, I was in Salisbury. But what we did, because you know I like to share the love and spread it around, we set up the iPad in our, our lunchroom there at the Piedmont Research Station and everybody at the poultry <laughs> unit had to take Ken Anderson's class. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to continue doing those things. We're Dear actually me. looking at adding yeah. a whole segment on eggs and distance eggs. Oh, right. And that you guys did not have to do that, and I appreciate it, because I think that's where it's at. You know, there's so many people like me that are older that want to continue their education. They just can't come to Raleigh. But, but we want to continue that, that learning way up into our later years. Thank you. Thanks to everyone for coming today. We certainly appreciate you. We are available to help if you want to set this up. 
If you want to ask questions, please don't ask me. Ask Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony has been the brains behind this entire um, setup. He's developed all of our spreadsheets, all of our um, information. You know, he's pretty sharp. Too. Yeah. We're, we're pretty proud of him. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for coming and sharing. So, and, and I'll have to admit, uh, they set it up in half the time that it took Michigan State to set theirs up. Of course. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> of course. Not that you're competing. Not that I'm competing. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, it took Darren well over two years to get his system up and operating. And he actually had to work with the company that did the computerization of this feeding system. But anyway, it's, uh, it's been good. And I, I mean, I can't say how much it's improved the flow of information from the layer test. Since Ramon has to collect data, you know, work with the data a lot much more than I do, but, uh, we can actually pinpoint problems a lot quicker. And Michigan is more expensive too, they said that, right? Yes. We looked into that. We started with that when we were yeah, like, Yeah, they, like, they spent like 40000 to set up their system. And they wound up with the same iPads that, <laughs> that they have. <laughs> so. Anyway. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> he didn't